the decision you reach here today will determine how we will regard this creation of our genius. It will reveal the kind of a people we are, what he is destined to be. It will reach far beyond this courtroom and this one android. It could significantly redefine the boundaries of personal liberty and freedom, expanding them for some, savagely curtailing them for others. Are you prepared to condemn him and all who come after him to servitude and slavery? Your Honor, Starfleet was founded to seek out new... There it sits! Welcome to Age of the Obsolete, the weekly podcast that examines the intersection of technology, democracy, and the future of work. I'm your host, John Rovito. What does it mean to be human? If consciousness and self-awareness make us unique among nature's creations, why then should we be cursed with so short a lifespan? Why must we age and be prone to disease? Why must we work and strive, acquiring knowledge and experience, only to see the sum of our efforts slip away into the shadowed veil of nothingness? Why must we be born only to die? A bristlecone pine can span millennia. Sharks and whales and red sea urchins live far longer than we can ever hope. A hydra jellyfish can continually replicate infusing itself with immortality. If, as humans, we stand atop the hierarchy, why shouldn't we be able to do the same? Transhumanism is the belief that evolution is an ongoing process, that by the use of science and technology, human beings can transcend their current biological and mental limitations to not only extend their lives, but to achieve a form of immortality. The Transhumanist Manifesto states that life is not the essence of humanity. Humanity is a step in the evolutionary process, not its culmination. To be human is a process of becoming. Biological evolution is slow, inefficient, blind, and dangerous. Technological evolution is fast, efficient, efficient, and better by design. There is, therefore, nothing inherently wrong in speeding up evolution and becoming the true masters of our destiny. Transhumanism, which can also be defined as self-directed evolution, leverages a range of technologies, including artificial intelligence, genetic engineering, and cybernetics. Though the application of these technologies to human beings raises a host of ethical, economic, and political questions. The central goal of transhumanism, the pursuit of immortality, is nothing new. It's nothing new. Throughout history, poets and philosophers have grappled with the inevitability of death as well as the means to overcome it. The Epic of Gilgamesh, written in ancient Mesopotamia more than 4,000 years ago, recounts its history of the secrets of eternal life. In Greek mythology, Tithonus, a Trojan prince, was granted the gift of immortality, but not the gift of youth. In fact, Greek and Roman myths abound in which mortals continually seek freedom from the curse of death, only to see their efforts thwarted. The gods are jealous of their immortality. It's what separates them from the ignorance and the suffering below. When Prometheus stole fire and gave it to humanity, Zeus responded by chaining him to a rock. To attain victory over death is to attain the Godhead, and this is something the ancient deities would not permit. Unlike the ancients, the German philosopher Friedrich Hegel discerned no difference between the human and the divine. For Hegel, by seeking to become as God, humans were simply come as God, humans were simply recognizing their own true nature, which was godlike. Nietzsche expanded on Hegel's idea when he wrote in Thus Spake Zarathustra that man is something to be overcome, a rope tied between beast and overman, a rope over not an end, but an overture. But unlike Hegel, 
Nietzsche also understood the dangers of seeking the Godhead, telling us that he who fights with monsters might take care lest he become a monster. And if you gaze for too long into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back at you. For both Christianity and Judaism, the sin of hubris is manifested in the pursuit of godlike powers, a transgression committed not once in the Garden of Eden, but a thousand times by a thousand different sinners. The most memorable of these is Victor Frankenstein, who tells us he will pioneer a new way, explore unknown powers, and unfold to the world the deepest mysteries of creation. But rather than reveal the mysteries, what he creates is a vengeful monster, neither human nor divine, divine, but instead a grotesque caricature of his overarching pride. This is the paradox the transhumanists also face. In seeking to overcome our biological limitations, in striving for immortality and the divine, we must also grapple with the unknown and consequences this implies. In searching for freedom, we also need to recognize that there is no such thing as perfect freedom. Each of our actions, no matter how thoughtful and well-intentioned, carries its own constraints and limitations. No matter how far we advance, no matter how much we strive, in seeking to remove ourselves from one prison, we also need to ensure that we don't unintentionally walk into another that is far worse. This is John Revito saying thanks for tuning in or want additional information on any of the topics covered in these podcasts, please go to our website at ageoftheobsolete.com. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.